What's up guys? This is Patrick Jensen back with uh, another Twitch live stream for you guys. Um, this has been awesome doing this uh, every every lunchtime here. Uh, of course I'm on the west coast so uh, could be a different time zone for you having dinner or a snack or something. Uh, but I uh, hope you can make it out to this one. Um, and of course if you're watching this later um, feel free to check out metavisuals.live and you'll find out when the next one is so hopefully you can join me live next time but um, yeah I'm super pumped to, to do this one today yesterday was awesome uh, we did a couple thumbnail sketches and black and white studies and um, environment designs based on um, elvish architecture which is pretty cool so um, we we did a couple cool paintings this was one of them and um so you can check out the old um uh yesterday's uh live stream to see how we how we made these um but today i thought it'd be fun there was a, a couple people who were um mentioning in the chat and stuff it would be cool to see like the refinement of one of these pieces and stuff so um today is going to be all about uh that uh for an hour or two and so we'll We'll dive into maybe fleshing one of these out so you can watch yesterday's video see see if we got to this point and then we'll, we'll go further from there uh hey guys looks like i already got some people from yesterday hey i'm glad you made it back that's awesome oh man it's good to see you guys how are you doing and mr puma pants thanks for the donation yesterday that's much appreciated <laughs> that's awesome yeah, these, these are all free videos. Um, uh, I'll be streaming live uh, free, and then if you miss it, you can check it out on YouTube. Uh, but of course, uh, um, donating to help me out is, is certainly awesome, and I can do more of these for you guys. Uh, so I sure appreciate it. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's see. So I was thinking, oh, let's pull up this one. This one was super fun. This was a suggestion by Mr. Puma Pants which is Elvish architecture on Mars, which is pretty cool. Um, and then we had this one, which is super cool. So these four were my favorites uh, from yesterday. And um, I was thinking it'd be cool to explore maybe this one and maybe the little shop um, and maybe get to this one. We'll, we'll kind of play it by ear, but um, uh, so let's close this guy and we will wait on this one. But these two would be super fun, so let's um let's go ahead and jump into it. Oh, nice! He said I like to contribute and get a lot from the answers to questions and watching you work. So thank you. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, feel free to ask more questions today. Um, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. All right, let's do this. So. <laughs> There's a couple ways you can refine this. One, you could just keep going on black and white and trying to uh, to um, uh, flesh this guy out as far as more black and white detail. But what we're gonna do is maybe explore some color and um, materials and just get a more polished piece out of this one. So we'll put this guy down here. So we might get to him later. Okay, so one thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna duplicate this guy so you can see the sketch um, and I'm going to turn that off. So we always have that above that we can turn on and see what our progress has been. Um, I'm also thinking, let's give us give ourselves a little bit more room. I'm kind of thinking we could do something along these lines. And so we'll grab the transparency, control click the thumbnail here, control shift I and edit fill content aware if you have Photoshop uh, CC or one of these. I forget which version they introduced that, but it's super helpful for just expanding your canvas quickly. All right, so we got a little bit more area to work with here. Next thing I'm gonna do is just up it in size a little bit. Um, I kind of like to shoot for 3000 for most of my work, just cause, you know, half of that 1500, looks good on most screens these days, so 1500 pixels wide. So some, usually I start with 3000 and then go up if needed, but um, we're gonna start with this. All right, now what I might do is just start flushing in some color. 
and go from there. So let's have at it. And what we might do, oh, I was looking up, um, I was looking up cottages and things because this does have kind of a cottagey, elfy feel to it. Um, and saw this guy, Breaking Dawn 2. <laughs> Bella! Copy. So we'll just bring in here, bring in some, some photos for some color grabbing. Um, and I was thinking it would be fun to do a nighttime scene, um, but we will see how it evolves. This has awesome uh, color variation in the trees and stuff, so we'll grab that one too. Okay, so you can see how I grab reference and use these guys. Yeah. All right, do this. All right, multiply. So I'm just going to get things a little bit closer to where we'll end up as far as the color range and then we'll we'll design within it. This is, uh, yeah, you'll see, this is just one way of, of going about things. Um, I'm thinking too, let's try, you know, we should just paint a little bit. So I'm gonna get some uh, these colors a little bit closer to where where I'm feeling it, and then we'll try to add some more design details and kind of flesh out the architecture of this place. Um, so right now we're just getting some swatches of color in here with this kind of moonlight setting. And this approach of refinement is kind of um, shooting for the end result first, uh, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to quickly get a mood going and um, a lighting scenario and then decide design wise if we need to tweak design of elements as far as um, uh, what it's made out of material wise or um, what are what's the foliage going on or, or what kind of foliage is there, what kind of trees. Things like that. Um, this is one way to approach that kind of uh, design because um, you can design first and add color later. But I'll show you how just quickly getting a image of what the end result could look like could help springboard your design choices. If that makes sense. So. Um, Someone asked, so you always start coloring with normal and not with overlay or color mode? I actually switch it up um, uh, and you will see why. And I'll explain those choices when I switch so you know. Um, but right now we're doing just normal and color picking. Um, but there's certain reasons I use certain layer modes or, or, and things. Um, so yeah, when I change them, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. What's up, Knox? How you doing? Good to see you again too. We're gonna put a little window right here. Maybe that's a separate awning. All right, we're gonna put the lighting, uh, the main moonlight coming from the top left here. 
just going to hit this guy a little bit more. Actually, bring this under a little bit. A little paler with that moonlight. Maybe this has a, so we have a blend of uh, the triangle kind of shapes on these two, and then we'll have an archway here uh, with maybe a triangle window underneath. So we'll play with uh, those ideas of switching up the, the shape language a little bit. All right, now, um, oops. So we'll have a light source inside. Um, and actually, well, well, we'll just shoot for grabbing the right color. But this will light up the ground here, um, which we'll just quickly get something in here to kind of help this out a little bit. starting pretty dark in the blacks here so these plants will just kind of pop out real, real easily because we have darkness behind it so I'm just concentrating on the top planes of this this little bush here and saying we'll put one over here too and we can work on the uh, like what kind of plants these are in a little bit but right now I'm just roughing in a couple more and stuff And maybe I'll just put a little path back here. And now I'm thinking about the negative space that this house would create against the, the foggy background, right? Um, so I'm just going to paint with this blue and kind of figure out what the shape of this house is, see? And put that in there and fuzz that away. And you've got a little shaping on this thing. Maybe I'll bring this awning up a little bit. Create a little rim light on that. And it's looking nice. See, you are color picking from the photos. Is that pretty common technique? I've heard a lot of painting purists deem that as a big no-no, but I know in production, it's whatever gets the job done type attitude. What's your thoughts? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I totally don't mind it. Um, and uh, I would say, uh, as far as learning color and learning lighting, um, uh, trying to replicate photos or uh, replicate master studies or doing a master study or maybe find concept art that you really like and try to match that. Like whenever you're doing a copy for learning purposes, it's very valuable. And actually um, uh, not color picking from those helps you out tremendously because you're trying to pick the right colors and things. And um, so in no, that's why people have, commented on or like like you said there's purists that say that's not a good thing to do um painting digitally and painting quickly um uh it does help to to color pick from photos um uh but having that knowledge and kind of training and uh and doing the exercises of of not color picking is very helpful so yeah so i guess what i'm saying is you can do both don't feel bad about doing both uh um, my mentality, my main mentality is, uh, and what, what's helped me actually a lot in digital painting is not worrying about color. Um, and that's huge. Um, because, you know, I'm throwing down some, some colors directly from here and they're kind of working, but 
um, you know, I'm gonna kind of color tweak this thing as we go. Um, you can always change colors later, and and learning how to do that um, is very important too. And you get better at that the more you the more you do it. But um, if it helps you get something down quickly, so you can then work on things, man, by all means, go ahead. Yeah, so that, hopefully that answers your question. And um, let's see, let's get this a little bit more refined and then we'll we'll do some fun with some adjustments and things. You'll see me actually make um, uh, I'll, I'll use this guy a lot because I know um, how to get the right colors that I want over here. Um, some people will will click here and, and find the color they want, um, which is more precise than trying to dial it in here. Um, so, man, all of these techniques of finding the right color are, are helpful. It's just a matter of like what what's what is more comfortable to you and stuff. So. Um, so yeah, see what see what other people are doing. Give it a try. See how you like it. That kind of thing. And then you'll you'll find how you ultimately like to do things. So what I just did, um, I selected all, and then I copy merged, and then I pasted. So I have this thing baked on a layer right now, like this. And that helps for like if you want to then uh, paint with your brush mode to like hard light. Um, you can you can bloom certain areas and get this stuff. Oops, <laughs> uh, because the paint reacts differently if you were to make a hard light layer versus paint with hard light using a brush. If that makes sense. Um, same with color dodge too. So someone was asking about when would I paint with different modes. This is one one circumstance where I, I like to switch this up a little bit or soft light, you know, all these have different effects and you can play with them and stuff. Oops. Actually. Maybe maybe this light is kind of bouncing off the ground here and then hitting this wall over here. So we're going to just grab what's going on in that wall and maybe uh, and actually we would want to red it or warm it up <laughs> warm up the color a little bit so um, we'll try something like this and then Okay. 
You can see these trees here have some cool color variation and we also have some fun stuff to work with over here. So we're going to use these for kind of fleshing out some um, variations in the trees and stuff. So let's try that out. Let's start with uh, this guy. So I'm just thinking about the highlights on this guy. And a little warmth as we go away like that. Cool. And then maybe in the background, we've got a little white tree. And we'll work on him later, but I'm just going to rough something in. And I'm noticing like this fog is getting a little saturated and it's competing with the, the house here. So I'm just going to see what it looks like if we desat it. And what I might do is a couple adjustments. So we'll desaturate it a little bit, play with the hue. Oh, there we go. Yeah, maybe in there. And then what I might do is do a levels on this too. I'm just kind of concentrating over here. Um, seems nice. Now those two adjustments, this is before, this is after. If I select both of those, group those, and put a mask on it, invert the mask, and then I'll paint that where I want, see? So I'm just going to desaturate the, the background here a little bit. I might not like it, but I just want to see what, what it looks like. So that's uh, before and after. And we can tweak these two. Um, and what I would want to do Actually, I might even throw curves on here too. I'm just playing around right now. I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm just kind of trying to find it. Yeah. And then I'm going to do a levels. I want more contrast on that tree and stuff. So I'm going to invert that levels and then paint it back into that tree a little bit. Get some more darkness in that. There we go. Yeah. So I'll show you what the before of after of those adjustments is. This is after, and then this is before. So after, before, after, before, after, before, after. So it's a little punchy and contrasty, but then I can. Um, we're going to paint on top of it, and so it won't be as punchy, but at least it's it's a little bit better as far as making this house pop against the, the atmospheric background and stuff. Someone said, I tried to use the color burn mode on the brush mode to make a part of the painting darker, but I did not really understand how it works. I mean, what color to pick if the one where I want the dark or a black? Sorry, the question out of the topic, but I'm pretty curious about it. Um, and how do you invert the mask? Oh, well, first, control I. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Puma Pants. Um, yeah, control I to invert. Um, color brush mode. Color burn is tough because it. <clears throat> um, let's do it. This is my burn tool. And got this guy. It's on mid tones. But um, sometimes it is helpful, like that, that's a nice change maybe. Um, but if you have these settings off, you can get some pretty, let's see, is it shadows? It crunches to black really quickly. Um, so just be careful with it. Um, there are other, actually this is nice. <laughs> I like I like the, yeah, <laughs> you know, you never know. Um, just be careful with it. I would turn down the opacity if it's doing too much. Um, 
or try using a brush mode set to multiply or a layer like that or a layer set to multiply you can cut and you can always turn down the opacity on the layer stuff like that um, you can have more control sometimes yeah color or color burn and color dodge are very tough when you have when you're working with color so if you're going to use it just make sure to maybe paint on top of it to kind of blend things together again um, Where's that roof? It's got some good stuff in here. So we're getting closer as far as enough to start figuring out the design of these like the architecture of it. We're getting the sense of it now. We're feeling the place because it's got a little bit of a some lighting to it and mood. So we might go ahead and start refining the the finer details, maybe. We're getting close to that point. We'll keep playing a little bit, just a little bit more. Uh, let's see what's going on over here. So I'm figuring out this awning, or the side of the house here, behind this guy. And maybe there's a path that... Oh, light coming from a door over there. And we'll just take this color. Um, and we'll brighten it up a little bit. Maybe pink it up. indicate some stuff back there. We can actually, let's flush this tree out a little bit more. I'm going to grab that green right here, see? I'm just bring all these up a little bit. And you get you get that lighter color. Or you can just blue it up a little bit more because it's getting hit by this this blue light and the moonlight. And actually having yellow, blue, green, you know, this is all creating nice color variety for your for your work. So it doesn't have to be the perfect color. I'm just thinking about trying to make this guy read. You know, trying to define something with shapes and colors takes a lot of experience and practice, but if you ever start with a sketch or draw out lines and paint over, it seems it would take way more time to do that. I do that and it takes that time. Yeah, it does take time to do to do line work um, and then add color. Um, actually, everyone is is different. Um, uh, as far as that approach goes, there's no there's no better way, I would say. Um, uh, I know people who can do line work like nobody's business. They can do that so fast. Um, so it all depends on the person and the artist. Um, yeah, so there's no, there's no right way. It's all about trying to get, uh, like if this was for a client or for, if you're passing this off to another department, um, you would want to, uh, you have to do certain steps to help out like a modeler. If a modeler is going to build this, this is not enough to build off of yet. You know, um, this is enough to soon show to a art director and be like, Hey, you know, this is what I'm thinking for this little house. Um, does it have the right vibe and scale that you want? Um, and then I'll flesh it out afterwards. It's that kind of thing. This is what this would be this process. Um, um, and I'll show you how we can refine the refine this guy later too. Um, 
I'll just rough in a we'll get some moon hits on the the path as it goes over here. Alrighty, so this is looking pretty good as far as a rough impression of the place. Um, might add a couple more. Let's add something like this guy back here, though. So we're almost we're almost done. Then we'll start refining the actual architecture and stuff. Um, now that's way too orange, so what I, I'm going to take that and just blue it up. And get something else. And we'll add this tree here too. Because I don't like how this tree is over this awning. It's kind of repeating itself a little bit. So we might change it, but let's just put in a little bit more tree behind this guy and see what that looks like. Okay. I think that's good. All right. So let's talk about this stuff. All right. I'm going to actually do a new group just so I can. Uh, this is the <laughs> this is the black and white sketch that we just started with a uh, half hour ago. And here's the, the mood and the colors that we're, we're establishing. So you can see how it's pretty quick to just, you know, use these photos as inspiration to put down some color. And um, we were refining the, um, um, the shape of the house a little bit, figuring out this left side. Um, yeah. So now we're going to do another group here so you can see, we'll do, let's see. Uh, color base, I guess, and then we'll do um, refinements. Okay, cool. And now let's go into this a little bit more. All right. Um, and we could start on the fo focal point, which is this entryway. And what I might do, let's do, okay. So one thing I do want on this, this was an elvish architecture kind of thing, is having a like an ornate little banister thing, uh, not banister, uh, like uh, a thing above the door. Uh, <laughs> well, you'll see. So I'm just poking holes in it and figuring out some shapes. And you know what? Let's do range, new window. So we can see this from afar to see what we're doing. Okay. Cool. So I'm just thinking about negative shape of this design of this thing right here. And I'm looking down here because my hand gets in the way of trying to see the design, you know, sometimes when I'm painting on a Cintiq. So when you're painting on a Wacom, your hand is not in the way because you're you're looking over here as you're painting. You know, the same uh, you can 
you can look here while painting here and you get the same effect as if you as if you were using a Wacom. Um, so I'm just eating into shapes and finding finding a design of this thing. See? I'll put that guy on the other side too. This does go super high as far as perspective goes, but we'll see if we can help, we can sell it. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. The important thing is you're exploring the space. You can always fix perspective and that stuff later. And this is just indicating some of the uh, awning shapes or shingles. How much do you use photos in the painting? I mean, if they are detailed. Uh, that depends on the end result. So, um, uh, because if you're doing a photographic, you know, project, you'll need to get to that style and do, um, have more photos in here. Um, and I don't know, depending on the time today, we might take this to a place and then add photos on top and you can see what it's like to, to go from painted to photo. That could be another demo too. Um, but this process you can use to go into any style, whether it's an animated film or you can go to uh, make it photo real. You could even start lassoing things out and really making it flat and stuff and get to that style too. So. Um, Again, it all, it all depends on the style of the show uh, or the project that you're working on. So if it's personal, just define those rules and do whatever you, you want because <laughs> uh, it's a personal piece and you're, you're having fun and exploring and stuff. So um, for this one, since this is a personal piece and, and I'm enjoying the, the, the painting, of it right now. Um, I'm going to define the shapes and, and refine this piece uh, using using paint mostly. And then we'll grab photos if we need it. So you know in houses there's a little molding on the on the ground. Um, if this is, is a darker wood, we're gonna bring this down in in its uh, local color, and so we'll have to do that over here too, and bring that all the way around the house. And then once you've kind of started doing that, you can play with the lighting on it and stuff, but let's just finish this out and figure out this molding here. And it would be over here too. Now it's getting lit here, but it won't go as light as this. So we'll just grab that and redden it up a little bit. Something like that. Maybe that kind of comes up. Into a little viney corner piece. I'm just playing right now. If we can get rid of this thing. Again, this is all just kind of exploring. I don't know where it's gonna go other than just um, I'm trying to figure out the space so what's fun is this would be an option and then you can get rid of stuff and try another option um, maybe 
as red. I don't know. We'll see. Let's get uh, this guy over here. Okay, this window, let's get this one out real quick. So you think it's better to improve with sketches without using photos to understand the volumes, like the daily spit paint idea. Um, depends on what you want to improve on, I guess. Um, yeah. Um, uh, what, what areas are you thinking of? Uh, try and improve on and I can give you a more specific answer um, just with uh, rendering or lighting or color or all the above <laughs> what a uh, then I can help you out Actually, this is a smaller window, so let's bring the size of this down. And we can do, we can vary the shape of these guys. So it's thin and then thicker, and then maybe this splits. And you get you get a nice read. It's kind of interesting. We could do the same thing on this guy too. Um, it's like a Celtic uh, knot or something. Oh, there's a cool horseshoe thing going on. See that right here? See, it's looking for those accidents, and then that can inspire your shapes. There we go. Kind of cool. As far as rendering volumes, though, um, really thinking about this stuff as far as um, drawing cubes and spheres and stuff um, and simpler shapes like if if a plane's coming towards you or away from you or uh, receding or if something's covering something else and you need some shadow underneath or um, I guess uh, breaking this stuff up a little bit and then and then you can um, um, it doesn't seem as complicated, I guess, if you simplify what it is you're trying to do. And it's tough to learn how to do that, but um, it just comes from um, breaking it down like that in your mind. Um, like right now I'm thinking about how big is the top of this awning? See, like, um, see this right here, this shape. It's, if you reverse that, it's, it's what's going on right here. So if the viewer is here, pretty much in front of this window, we're not going to see. It depends on how high it goes, how low it goes. Sorry. Um, you know, we could put it all the way back up to here, um, or not. We could have it just go back to maybe the middle of the house, and then you would add like a little bit of a crease when it meets the house, but not have it too dark because this is a kind of a realistic rendering. And then that light is spilling onto the awning over here. So I'd grab some of this blue, maybe lighten it up a little bit, warm it up a little bit. And then I can hit the roof here with a little bit of that bounce light from this awning here. And actually that's not the right color, but we can go darker, more saturated, a little warmer. Maybe color dodge it a little bit. Ah, there we go. 
get something like that. Then it gets cooler as it gets back in space. So it's it's kind of thinking, breaking it down like that um, about what, what you're doing. And then the shadow side is not there yet, right? So that's the next thing. That's it'd be like, okay, you could rough it in real real quick of like, it's got to be dark because it's on it's on the the side opposite of the moon. But then it doesn't have to be that dark. Maybe it's getting some warm warm light from the screen right here. So it's going to get some of that. We could just bring in some of that as it dips over. And again, as it gets closer to here, where it is being moonlit, um, add a crease of a shadow, and then add some of that like purpley stuff into the core shadow there. We could chisel it out a little bit too. Or you could like do that and get a little hit. So it's breaking it down as you work on it, and you'll you'll find what to do. When you started doing backgrounds, I used many photos, even in the sketch part, but now I'm a little afraid of using them because I don't want them as a shortcut. There's nothing wrong with using a photo for a shortcut to work on a piece. <laughs> I would say don't don't worry about it. In the same breath, though, the best way to learn, though is uh, well, there's a lot of ways to, to learn because everyone's different but um, I guess what I'm saying is don't be afraid you know that's the worst thing you could do is be afraid of doing something but just make sure you're balancing your work with doing studies of what you see uh, whether it's doing copies of works or uh, painting what you see on your desk um, or going out and painting with real life drawing figures drawing in coffee shops or uh, bars or wherever you go and you know uh, um, training your eye is the best way to learn and you you don't have to do that with Photoshop you can you can learn with a sketchbook uh, anywhere and that helps too Hickey P Mellon what's up man it's good to see you Glad you guys are coming back for more. find this stuff what is going on in here so now we're not copying this house exactly but it's got some cool stuff going on as far as colors and things um, one thing we could try is thinking about maybe there's wood paneling at the bottom and then you have this lighter wood on top you know what we could do? Let's try levels on it. Um, and I just bring up the blacks. This might be a bad idea, but we'll, we'll try some out. Invert that. Control I. As we, as we discovered earlier. <laughs> good times, relaxing. Oh, good. I'm glad you, glad you, glad you find this relaxing. Actually, what if this whole wall is... Yeah, let's back up a little bit. I'm just testing this out. What if all this is a lighter, uh, lighter color? Kind of cool. I don't know. Ooh. 
I like that. You guys like that? I like that. This is without that. This is with. Let's see if we can make that work. Okay, we'll start there. We can always get rid of it. And I'm really liking this 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 color up here. Let's see if we. Um, it's going to get darker as we get higher because the roof is overhanging that wall, right? Or the yeah. So let's just gradate that. We get kind of peachy towards the bottom. And actually, if we do that, we can actually uh, get some more bushes and things in here that would be darker against that wall, right? So we're creating more opportunities for adding some neat set dressing and vegetation. And we could add these little pillars. See, all these ideas are being spawned by just lightening up that wall. And then let's get some light being bounced onto that pole from the ground here. We'll echo that over here. And then we can indicate a little bit of a arch thing. And that's looking kind of fun, right? Yeah, I like that. Cool. I like the uh, little hit of light along this edge. See how it just kind of pops out this dirt and um, uh, defines the edge of the, I guess it's a porch now or something. We'll see. But that's what, what that is. Um, we actually might want to get more light on the wall right here. So I'm going to throw levels on it and just bring, bring the highlights like that. Invert that. And then I tested it out with a stroke, undid that, and then I'm just going to paint it on this wall here. Cool. I kind of like that. This is a uh, little bit of a pillar thing. Echo that over here on this side. So it goes up and then arches. Get some hit with some light. We have a cool ornate pillar going on now. It's nice. Okay, so this is coming along. Let's get uh, give this a little bit of life to it. Who would have thought Twilight could provide so much good inspiration? 
I actually haven't seen Twilight. Have you guys seen Twilight? I'm kind of curious. Totally. It was a phenomenon. I just went, totally missed it. Yeah, it's looking nice. A little one here. Maybe this is a a neater one. Maybe he gets like pink. Then we'll get like deep purple kind of. Or blue. There's some, make some neat plants. This is an elfish uh, location or a fantasy environment, so you could have some cool stuff like this, especially near the doorway, since that's our focal point. Yeah. This is where I, I go to that burn tool because this this uh, these plants are on a layer. So if I burn that down, I can just quickly get that shadowed underneath because it's closer to the ground. So um, quick way to add some add some shadows down there. So oh, twi Twilight is the <laughs> the light of the night. Isn't this from Twilight? I thought it said Bella going to the house or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> it is kind of well. It's more nighttime than twilight. I guess it could be twilight. This is a cool little path, so I'm just gonna grab some of it. <laughs> cool. And then those awnings, or uh, awnings, pillars, posts. There we go. Okay, they're a little they're a little contrasty, but I'm okay with that. What we could do, sometimes it's good to do a select color range, and we'll just grab this this color here. And you can rock the fuzziness and see. Oh, it's mainly selecting underneath that porch there. And I'm going to make a new layer, okay? I'm going to control H and hide that. Hide the selection. And then I can paint shadowed stuff underneath that. See that? So let's see. Could be lanterns under there. Ah, that's okay. That's mainly working there, but we can just block in a little bit of more of that blue shadowing from the porch. Actually, if we go dark enough and then we light up these posts a little bit, it might be nice. Uh, let's see. Or actually, let's do the post. What happens if we go lighter? It's kind of nice. Maybe, maybe, might be too much. 
That's okay. We'll keep it for now. Try it out. So there's a couple of things you can do with stuff. You can play there's a dark post against a light background, and then it gets light against a dark background, right? That creates some visual interest, but when you have that everywhere, it, it might be too much. But um, So that's why I was just playing with it when it goes lighter versus it playing it darker than the background. So you got options when you're doing coloring like this. Oh, you missed how I selected that. Uh, at any time, you can just... Uh, Go up to select and do color range. Um, select any color on your canvas. Um, so let like the blue hits on the roof and see the fuzziness. You'll just want to put that higher or lower and it'll grab more of that color uh, if you want. And then it'll make a selection from this. So you can just grab all the highlights of this roof and you can do anything with that selection then. I can make a, make a color balance and it's got that mask here, see? And then I can blue up those the light or not, which is kind of fun actually. Or work on the coloring of it. Shadows. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. This is nice. Just fine. In. So that's before after, before, it was a little purpley. Now it's getting a little bit more blue-green. So yeah, it's just some, another trick in your, your book now. Okay, what is going on right here? I don't know. We have to figure that out, let's see. Could be either like a, a bay window or something. Ooh, our little garden area, I don't know. Let's see. This is where it's helpful if uh, if you have a spec for the, the space. Like, if you're doing this for a game or something, they would say, hey, we need a little area for the characters to have, have lunch or dinner or something. <laughs> a little nook, a little reading nook. Um, so, but we're just uh, playing around. This, I guess it could be something for WoW, World of Warcraft, or if you were making this for a film, this is kind of how you do a, a lighting key or a environment design. Hmm. Just, I'm just noticing something. Yeah, I'll work on the I'm on that roof later. Need some help over there. Okay. <laughs> Got distracted. That's one o'clock. I could I take a little five minute breather. Post this up and See if anybody else wants to come in and join us. And then we'll keep going, refining it a little bit. Hope this has been helpful though. Maybe. Okay, we got it. Let's see. Let's figure this out. What if it's blocked off? Could be good let's do it okay so now I'm gonna just uh, gonna make this more of a hard transition so like uh, let's see it comes towards us like that we have blue light on the left we have warm light on the right because this main entryway is bouncing all this light over here um, so I'm gonna play with sectioning this off so it's just like a little think of it as simple shapes you know um, and then we have light on, maybe there's a little molding here. Okay. And then I've got to figure out the ground. 
and then this bush will be in front of it, right? And then we will just make it read a little bit. We're going to hit the tops and the sides and shadow it against the wall here. We're going to hit that with some more light next to the shadow, like that, to make this feel more lit. And that feels more like a shadow now. Cool. All right. Okay, let's do. And we'll get some blues in there. Oops, we good? Nice. Okay, and then what's going on here? Maybe. Okay, now I'm just looking for ways to make this awning feel good. And the posts, working in some of the design that we're, we're doing. Let's get our other brush. Oh, find the right one. Okay, it's looking good. Getting there. All right, let me save this real quick. Um, we'll do uh, Elvin, Elvish uh, house um, color progress JPEG. Okay, this is yeah, ten's fine. Oh, actually, let's just do a quick. Uh, Sometimes I copy everything, paste everything, merge it down so it's just a background layer. Image size, we'll do 1400, 100%. Uh, okay, we'll do a little bit of a sharpen on it. Control Shift F, which fades it. And you could do like a, maybe 40%, 50% of that sharpen. And then we'll just put a little metal live on there. Cool. Sweet and a little signature here. Cool. Save. All right. Hang in there, guys. I'm going to keep going on it, but I'm just going to save this out really quick. So, two minutes, and then we'll keep going on it, okay? Um, Hope this is helpful though. Hope you guys are having fun. I'm sure having fun with this one. Um, let's see. So hang in there be back in just a minute um, let's see another minute then we'll keep going with this one
Cool. All right. Someone asked, uh, what am I making and what and for what? Uh, that's awesome. Um, I am having fun. Uh, let's see. Let me just put this for web. That's a great question, though. I don't know what I'm doing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, okay, close that. Cool. I am... This is what we're doing. Yesterday, we did a bunch of elfish elvish sketches um elvish architecture sketches and then uh today i well someone asked yesterday you know can you take that piece and refine it um and show that kind of process so um what i'm doing today is showing how we got to here actually in the past hour 15 minutes so um we were doing a lot of color and then now we're re refining the architecture and then we're going to bring it home maybe with some photos who knows um, but, uh, it's not for anything. It's other, it's just for you guys, actually. Um, I, uh, am enjoying just coming on here and, and painting. I'd be painting regardless. So I might as well paint live with you guys and you can ask questions if you want or hang out, say, Hey, um, why you work or have lunch or whatever. Capitan. Hey, how you doing? So, yeah. All right, let's see. Oh my gosh, sorry about the text. Okay, sorry. All right, let's do this. Okay, so these were the refinements. Looking good, thank you very much. Uh, okay, all right, you know what we'll do? Let's do I want to play with some, just some adjustments and see what we can do, see where we can go with this. So hang in there. Now this is where it gets funky, or, or fun rather. Um, we're going to do, <laughs> this is option one. I don't know. We'll just do options, I guess. Okay, so this is a gradient map set to overlay. And um, you can get some neat results. Like this is already looking cool as far as in here and stuff. Uh, but it just totally changes your piece completely. Um, and adds different different colors you might not have expected or painted. Um, some richness and stuff. Like this doorway is looking really nice with this, right? Um, and, oh, too hot. Too desaturated. I'm just playing, see if we can find something. That's nice. It's nice in there. So this is without that, and this is with, right? Without, with. And you can get a gradient map right here. So that's what we did. And then we're adjusting this guy, and the gradient map is set to overlay. Um, so, but I don't like it everywhere. So like I usually do, um, put a mask on it, and I like painting it where I want it. So. See how this is a little bit chalky? Um, there's a lot of gray in there, and then just painting that in there adds that kind of, it's just more grounded and more, more well, it is more saturated, but um, the contrast is better. Um, overall, it's just looking, looking nicer, you know? And that's hard to paint from scratch. That's why using adjustment layers like this, um, it's just part of your tricks to kind of bring your piece to that that finished quality. So I'm going to hit the uh, underside of this awning here. That one's looking pretty good. And then the roof actually needs a lot of work. So we might do some, some roof action next. Um, but I'm liking, and actually we might use this to make a shadow from the roof, see? Uh, well, we can bring back a little bit. Maybe the moon is more right above this this house. And I might use it to 
darken this tree a little bit. Now the ground, we could get warmer with it. I like it over here. So I'm going to just shadow it, see, right under those, those bushes. And that's helping that out a little bit. Nice. And this guy, see how like this is the same green as over here. If we just, uh, you know, put it over here. Now it's gradating from this green to this warm uh, over here. So these are the kind of um, um, adjustments you would do to bring a piece to that, that final quality. I'm noticing, uh, uh, remember we added this molding here. We gotta continue that over here now. So, um, someone asked, "Is this building done without reference?" Uh, yes, just kind of using. I've seen the Lord of the Rings films and the Hobbit films so much. I love those those films. Not the Hobbit, well, not the Hobbit films, but I mean, it's great art and stuff. But I've rewatched Lord of the Rings probably a thousand times. Love that series. So. This is just taking inspiration of Elven architecture um, from those movies, and then kind of doing our own thing with it. But from 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 my head and from what what uh, what uh, what you kind of remember from the film, just trying to capture that kind of feeling. So now we're going to get a little bit roof detail on this. And I'm just trying to get some shapes in here. And then we can knock things back and stuff, but And now we're gonna like refine the splotchiness. See how the, the roof is pretty, uh, it's cool and sketchy, but we wanna get to a little bit more of a finished level. So it's about uh, seeing if those choices that we made are good ones, as far as the height of the roof, the dome of this thing, and just kinda refining the shapes. There'd be little hits as this goes over. Um, you would get little hits of the shingles as it goes away from away from us like that. Okay, so I'm going to darken this archway a little bit, see? It was getting a little too foggy back there. And should we hit it with light? Maybe. Sure. And what if there's more light coming from this doorway over here, that way, onto the ground there? So I'm making a levels, and I'm just going to punch this up. Somewhere in there, okay? Now it's too contrasty overall. I'm gonna invert that. Control I, paint with white, and see how it's just adding that light over here from that doorway. That's that's where I wanted it. Actually, this moonlight is pretty fun. We can 
bloom this up here. Uh, maybe a hard light layer. Let's see what this looks like. It's nice. Someone was asking about hard light or, or using different brush modes. So this is a good example where I need a little bit of a bloom of light up here and maybe on the awning. And so hard light's a fun one um, to just paint a real saturated blue like this um, and get that kind of bloom, see? And what we could even do is uh, just smudge this guy and get a little bit of the... the <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that, but it, it streaked this out a little bit, you know, which is kind of nice. Okay. It's looking good. Okay. We got a, this is a dead area right here. I'm like looking at the piece and my eye kind of goes right here and I don't want it to. So. What are we going to do about it? What we could do is knock it back. Um, see, actually, in this photo, you got a good... See how this is darker? All this kind of goes down into darkness, and then you have this bush lit here. Uh, that's mainly because the main light source is way up here on the top, and so all this is kind of falling into shadow. Um, see the shadow of the house down here? And then it gets brighter from that light. Their shadows are showing you where that light is, so I guess it's, it's up here. But we're going to try to mimic some of that here and then pop out some of these bushes like what's going on here and see if that helps. So what I'll do is um, make a folder and a layer so we can see what that change is. So that's my mentality for this next little bit. So I'm going to darken this. Whoa. The use of the mask is blowing your mind. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's fun when I started doing it, um, uh, making a mask, inverting it, and then painting where you want it. It's uh, and then adjusting it if you need to. It isn't. It's nice. Um, definitely try it out in your own work. See if you like it. use some of this color because this is nice. Um, and let's set this to color dodge and use it real sparingly and it's just going to hit that same paint with this little hit. Uh, hits of light, kind of like what's going on here. And that got too much, see, a little bit too much. I'm just going to fuzz that out a little bit. Um, I kind of like this. Uh, shaping this bush a little bit more I'm trying it out and we will get some more blue thanks for this stream really relaxing to watch while at work Really Bob Ross-esque. Nice. Glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> I would watch Bob Ross growing up. Uh, yeah, it was great. I 
don't know if there's a rock back here, maybe. I tried the smudge tool today, and before going to bed, I'm gonna try to use the mask this way. Awesome. Yeah. Same, nice. Now I'm just going to paint a little bit of darkening down here. Nice. And this moss stuff, we don't have on the other side. Let's do that. And we'll get a little bit more of a... light on it. Let's see. Now I'm looking down here while painting just to see maybe it's like over here. And right there, it's like shaping out this bush that we could put right here. See? And we can work on the lighting of it in a second, but I'm just putting it in the base of the house here. Since that's on a layer, I can make a new layer below that layer. Grab the black and just paint underneath it so we get a little shadowing underneath it. Smudge that a little bit. And then let's go back to that moss layer. And we have our burn tool, um, which I hit O for, the shortcut. And I'm just going to burn it towards the house, create a little shadowing, right? Then I'm going to select this color and add a little bit more red, green, a little less blue. Got a little saturated, so we just bring these together a little bit more. A little bit more. We got a highlight color now. And we're just going to hit the right side of it a little bit as it gets lit from the house there. Would be cool with some relaxing music. Oh, I know. Um, Interstellar OST. Oh, I gotta check out Interstellar uh, music. Um, so since I'm, this is, you know, I'm still new to streaming on Twitch. I don't know about uh, what's with the copyright. Do you guys know? Um, do you have to be a partner for it to not be taken taken down? Um, and if I put this to YouTube too, I can't, I can't uh, potentially put an ad on it or something because it'll be copyright infringement or some countries don't allow it if it's got certain music. So I don't know how, because some Twitch channels have music that is not their own. Um, so I don't know quite how that works yet. I'm still, because I would love to put some, some chill music on the background for you, especially soundtracks and stuff. Or something that would fit this kind of work. So I'm still learning about that. I figured for now in these early days before I get that set up, you can guys can just uh, put on your favorite game soundtrack or movie soundtrack and or rap, <laughs> whatever you feel like. Uh, and uh, you know, enjoy your own stuff instead of listening to my tunes. I don't know. Maybe someday I'll get some music. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah, well, I'll figure it out. Yeah, Twitch mutes the sections that run into copyright problems. Yeah, I've seen that before. That's why I'm. I don't want to mute mute my talking. I want to talk to you guys. <laughs> Otherwise, this would get really boring, I think. Well, it's just not as much fun for me or you. This window, a little saturated uh, red. I'm not sure about that. You prefer music free streams? Oh, good. Nice. Yeah, you can add your own music. There you go. 
Are you guys listening to any tunes right now? Interstellar, I'll definitely check it out. Safest way. Oh, good. Just put on Interstellar. Nice. You prefer me talking. Nice. That's good. Thanks. We're getting close on this one. I think it's almost there. Might, um... When I look at it from afar, my eyes going right here. Let's look at this one again. Now if you squint, all you're seeing are these highlights on the ferns and stuff, and the highlights of this. If you squint at this, you see these broad strokes of mid-value green. Now I don't mind the moss popping, that's kind of fun and makes it look a little more fantasy with the yellow, but let's see what we can do about the, the tree here. And then the next thing I want to do is kind of use this as reference for what's going to go on back here and play with wrapping that up. Um, so those are the two things I'm going to do next. Cool, yeah, let's keep going. So I might just do levels, bring this, bring this down, bring down the whites, and get it closer into here. Um, so I'm just looking right here. So invert the mask. Um, yeah, if someone wanted to watch past videos and it was muted, that would stink. Yeah. There we go. Something we could do too. Let's just grab the whole thing, paste it, okay, and then set it to soft light, and it gets real contrasty. But you could do image adjust levels, play with the game a little bit, play with the shadows, and I'm looking right here. See how this tree is popping against the roof, real nice. So that I'm gonna put. It doesn't have a mask because I duped the whole canvas and it's set to soft light, but I can still put a mask on it, invert it, and then paint with white where I want it. And see, look at that. It's just bringing that tree and popping it against that roof and helping that out a little bit. Maybe we'll go darker with the trees back here. And now, let's see about bringing up the, the shadows on this roof a little bit. So I'm just painting real light. Yeah, let's see if we, what happens when we just bring all this up a little bit. It's nice. I'm gonna just get rid of that towards in certain areas, like the crease of the house here. But I like that change, that was nice. Before, after, before, after. Maybe I'll get rid of it back here. This pops against the background. Nice. Before, after. Feel that roof is really reading now, so it's cool.
all these explanations are helpful. Oh, good. I'm glad. Okay. Now let's just get a couple more hits from this guy. We can actually bring that all the way down into the shadow a little bit. See how that just brings out that arch a little bit. And this guy, I think, I'm going to try something out. We got this on a layer, so what if we carve into this a little bit more? Uh, did you think about composition? Because I'd like to know how you used composition in the painting. Uh, the only thing composition-wise I was thinking of uh, was that in initial sketch, which looked like uh, this. And when I made this, I was really just thinking about an entryway to a shop with a cool arch and, and kind of creating some uh, tree overhangs and maybe a little walkway back there. So that that turned into this uh, today. Um, so as far as composition, I was mainly, the camera's a little bit low to the ground, so we don't see much of the the uh, path. It's all about the house and, and stuff. So I did think about having the horizon low like this um, so that we could see more of the house. Um, I put the archway off center. Um, that's another thing I was thinking about. Yeah. So, yeah, a little bit about composition and stuff. Um, cool. Let's do. As far as trying out options for compositions, we we did a couple sketches yesterday, and this one was one of my favorites for wanting to explore today and kind of see where it could go. So that's kind of what happened. You know, it'd be cool. I do like that blue that's kind of peeking in the sky. We have a little bit of brighter blue. Let's just see if uh, bringing some of that in into the sky back there is nice. Yeah, we can also just hit it. back there. Pop out a row of trees here, see? Adding more depth right away. Poke a couple holes in this one. Good. Yeah, composition's fun because or as far as, um, like we recropped this right at the beginning. Remember the sketch was a little cropped like this. And we increased the canvas so I could see more of the house. Um, you know, don't be afraid to, to make changes like that, I guess. You know, the, the composition is always changing until you're done. Um, which is fun. Yeah, so as you work on it, um, yeah. You always got that option too of just of, of changing it. Um, what is going on here? This is <laughs> all over the place. Actually, this could be darker back here. There we go. And so now, if you, for example, want to add a person in the painting, are you going to insert him on a layer alone and then work on him? Yeah, you totally could. 
yeah, that would be one way to do it for sure. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. Um, you can have them on a layer if it makes it help, if it helps you work on them separately. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, with layers, uh, you can see I, I got rid of this one, but um, every time I'm unsure about a new change or a new thing that I'm going to paint, uh, I'll make a new layer um, just so I can turn it on and off and see if that was a good change. Um, so people, or and if you need to organize your painting, to be able to make changes for a client, that's another good reason to have a lot of layers. Yeah. Now I'm just thinking about this uh, this ornate kind of thing above the door, and how it might cast light on the wall here. So I'm just poking poking in some rays of light on the wall. Maybe it's asymmetrical. I don't know. Let's see what that looks like. like it just rained. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit, doesn't it? Now you know what? Let's add some stuff over here. We got, um, actually, let's do a new layer and just get some stuff like this. And then what we could do is use our color dodge tool. Just hit the sides of it like that. And then control T and you can warp it. Make a nice little bush. Nice little bush top. See? You can even dupe it. Maybe flip it. Get another one. It's kind of fun. We could do so do that some more. Alright, new layer. Oh yeah. Have a great sleep. And thanks for following. I appreciate it. Hope to see you next time. Thanks. Actually, we have that on a layer. We can, uh, whoop. It's kind of fun. Let's do it again. <laughs> Let's grab some of that yellow. Serve transparency on it and then just gradate the color a little bit.
Cool. This gives me motivation to rework some stuff after this stream. Oh, good. I'm glad. That's awesome. Let's get some red, some crazy red bushes in there. tree. That was nice. All right. What I could do, I'm going to just test out a lighten layer. Just lightens up the blacks a little bit, see? Maybe we do that. I don't know. Not sure. Just trying stuff out right now. I like it, but not everywhere. Let's just turn it down. Just helps out the blacks. All right, cool. All right. Coming down the home stretch on this one. Uh, maybe just a little bit longer and then we'll call it a day. Thinking about the shapes of this, uh, this awning here, or post. I like the little warm hits. I don't mind that. Just gonna figure out the edge of this roof, make it a little more interesting. What happens if this is bright? I think it's good. Let's do it. <laughs> Sometimes that's all it takes. Just throw a brush stroke in there and see if see if it's a good change. I needed a swatch of bright over here. Balance out the piece a little bit. So that's kind of what I was thinking for that. Should I go up a little bit like that? So it's not so straight across. Kind of nice, right? Bow this a little bit. Just want to check something. Okay. 
So I noticed the roof was getting kind of wonky, so I just had to fix that real quick. See last little bits. hits of light on the roof or on the shingles just in a couple places to help this thing out a little bit doesn't have to be everywhere this is way too bright it's a little uh that's okay Never mind. Thinking about those shingles, how they overlap each other and stuff. And create some cool, cool things happening there. All right, and this guy. Can poke some holes in this tree. Makes sense. Okay, we're going to select everything, copy, merged, which is Control shift c and then Control v for paste. So we have a duplicated one right here. Then I can use my burn tool and just kind of burn the tops of these trees a little bit. Get a little bit more contrast back there. Nice. Now I'm going to play with just seeing about adding it up here. And we might uh, <laughs> I 
<laughs> hey, Yao Minga. Yao Minga? Yao Minga. How's it going? Well, Miyazaki looking, isn't it? It's kind of funny. Okay, a couple, couple hits here. Break up the shadow. And this green, oh, that's fine. I think we're about almost done. Let's see. You know what we could do? We were doing that, uh, kind of getting that spotchy stuff going on. Just might need a little bit of texture on this ground just to help it out a little bit. So you do something like that and then we can control T, do a perspective on it, get it working with our camera, and change that to distort. Something like this. Nice. And we could either like uh, preserve transparency on that and then uh, paint some some hits like this or you can do a lot of things once you do something like that um, but it just kind of helps add some texture and perspective this is without it this is with without with it's kind of nice and then uh, I might erase it a little bit because I got a little too much here. But with that in there now, then you can go in with another brush and paint on top of it because you have your perspective a little bit now and get some cool like hits from cobblestones or something. Now that you have your perspective in there. Oh, nice. You're going to go to sleep. <laughs> well, I'm glad you stopped in. If you missed the earlier part of this, um, uh, you can catch it later on YouTube. I'll post the whole thing. So you can watch the whole stream later. And then uh, hopefully you pop in next time and you can see the whole process of something like this. Yeah, we've been having fun today though. This has been a cool one. All right, I think we're almost there. I think we're we're just about there. Um, we have our dodge tool. Let's go back to that layer and just hit this with a little bit more light. Yeah. There we go. Why not? looking at the ground right now it's a little dark or a little light so I was thinking about adding a little bit a couple of some some darker areas just to see what this looks like nice 
Do I have deviant art? I need to save this art and make it my background. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. I don't have deviant art. Uh, I wish I was on there. Maybe I'll hop on there sometime. Um, but uh, uh, go to uh, metavisuals.live and you can see uh, the past streams and the images I'm making. Um, and once this is done, I'll post a YouTube link um, probably this afternoon. And um, it'll be like this one. So you'll, you'll see the date on here. And this was yesterday's stream. So you have the whole stream to rewatch if you want. And you got the final images and stuff. Um, and these will these will be, you can download these and, and, uh, and use them as your background or whatever. So um, that'll be all posted at metavisuals.live, okay? Uh, in case you miss it. Um, so yeah, it's my little, my little hub on the internet for this, uh, the live streaming. live streaming portion of what I do, what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, did the stream freeze? Oh, did it? Yeah, you bet. What uh, things outside of drawing and painting do you do to keep your skills sharp? Um, I uh, actually take a lot of photography. I love traveling and, and just looking through a lens, which helps with composition, uh, especially um, trying to find neat shots to take and stuff. Um, so that actually helped quite a bit um, for that. Watching movies, playing games, just stop once in a while and appreciate the environment or the characters or whatever. Your kill death ratio might go down, but at least you're you're getting a benefit of it by checking out the cool stuff that those amazing artists make. <laughs> it depends on the game, of course, but yeah, like just watching stuff and reading man let's go get lost in a library american ninja training helps that's true <laughs> that's awesome my liner liner brush Wrapping this guy up. Just thought it needed some some smaller stuff back there. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, do you think there's a good ratio? What sort of time do you spend on sketching versus exploration versus rendering? Like what you're doing now, like 20, 80, 40, 60. Um, oh, real quick. Hey, good night. Thank you so much for popping in, Yao Minga. Yeah, take it easy, and thanks thanks for stopping in. That's awesome. Uh, uh, so yeah, to answer your question, um, it, it kind of depends on your process and stuff, you know? Um, like, you could either um, sketch something that's not too, not too good. Oh, Freelex, I'm sorry I missed your donation. Thank you so much for the $10 donation. That's awesome. Thank you very much. 
I'm still I'm still trying to figure out how to get like notified for that. I know it pops on the screen, um, but uh, of course, painting and talking and this, I'm still getting used to this. So I apologize. I didn't see it earlier. Thank you so much. Um, that's awesome. Uh, I'm jazzed. All right. Uh, yeah. So as far as like your process and stuff, you can you can paint something that looks like garbage and then finesse it to make it look good, right? Or you can do like 20 options and find a good foundation to do something and then refine that piece, right? So both are valid. They both get to a point where uh, it's a successful piece. So it all depends on your process and like what's working. You might hit it out of the park on that first one and show it to your art director and they're like, yes, go with that. Um, or you're in a mood for exploring it and you're not quite sure what it's going to look like. Then you might do more sketching, more thumbnails and stuff, and then try to figure it out. So, um, yeah, it all depends on, on the circumstance, who you're working for and what you feel like doing? Um, because they're all, it all works. So, um, like this one we did, uh, we did eight sketches yesterday. Um, and then settled on this this one to refine today. So I guess I wasn't trying to focus on making a house in those eight sketches, but exploring cool environments to maybe flesh out. Um, uh, it took eight tries to kind of find like a good one, I guess, or that I was like, oh, that'd be fun to keep going on, you know? So I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no secret ratio, I guess, too. Um, it's all good. All right. I think we might wrap this guy up. It's 2.08 here on the West Coast. We've been going for two hours and this has been awesome. Got another donation, which I'm super happy about. Thank you again. Um, yeah. I was gonna add rocks and stuff. That's what this is. Um, let's just uh, get rid of that a little bit. And we'll just... There we go. That's better. It is nice having a little bit of light down here. Um, just to balance it out a little bit. But yeah, we'll wrap this one up and then call it a day. And I, uh, I'm gonna take tomorrow off, but I'll be back on Monday. So, um, Monday at lunchtime, Pacific time, and we'll do, we'll do something else fun. Right now I'm going to kind of switch it up each stream and do something different. Um, and then maybe get ideas sparked from you guys, like of what you want to see and stuff. Um, that's kind of how today's topic came about after seeing yesterday's thumbnail. So anyway, um, I'm not sure what we'll do on Monday, but it'll be, it'll be fun. And I'll try to stream most days next week. 12 noon Pacific. But you can of course go to metavisuals.live and, and I'll update that with uh, whatever I'm doing for you guys too. Thanks so much guys. Uh, and thanks for following, I sure appreciate it. Graphic designer from Chicago, nice, awesome. Thanks so much, guys. I sure appreciate it. Yeah, hearing that you're digging this, I'm 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 excited to do more and stuff. So um, I hope it's been helpful.
All right, I think that's it. <sighs> Gonna call it a day. Do you like how I just say, this is it, and then I keep going? You can keep noodling this stuff forever. That's so fun. It's done when you stop, when you put the pen down. Little hits of light. Cool. Boom. There it is, guys. Nice. That was fun. Should we step? Oh, do we have a question? I meant to ask which artists have your eye on and or have been a big influence on your work. Oh, that is a good question. Um, gosh, uh, let's, I would say growing up, uh, definitely Craig Mullins got me uh, super inspired to just push myself with digital painting. Um, uh, I was there on the Saijin forums um, back in the late 90s, early 2000, um, uh, when when he was posting all the time and stuff. And so, uh, yeah, he's he's definitely the biggest inspiration as far as our, um, just digital illustration and map painting because he used to, he used to do map painting, um, and so that kind of got me into to map painting too. Um, or inspired to do digital map painting, which I ended up doing for, for as a job. Um, so yeah, Craig Mullins, um, love Nathan Folks. Uh, his art is amazing. Uh, and uh, Dominique Louis, um, always been a fan of his work. Those two guys have worked on DreamWorks animation films and Pixar animation films. Um, so I really appreciate their work and their style. Um, but yeah, actually, just going on ArtStation and seeing the latest uh, work from everybody or DeviantArt and stuff, um, I get jazzed just seeing anybody's talent and stuff. So uh, these days I don't have, I just like seeing everyone's kind of work and stuff. I don't really have a, a favorite anymore because there's so many great artists and and you can get inspired so easily these days because um, it's easy to find their work and stuff. More and more people are posting and stuff. Yeah. All right, that's it. I think we're going to call it. So real quick to wrap it up. Um, let's see. Let's just run through this. I grouped a couple groups, so we have a couple steps here. Um, this was the sketch from, from yesterday. Um, and today, uh, starting at 12, two hours ago ish, we added a quick color pass. Um, and then we started to refine some of the design elements and get some of that elvish architecture and stuff. Um, then we started punching up the contrast and colors and creating more dynamic range of the image to proceed. Um, then we started rendering things out a little bit more. And actually what's funny is I like this version a little bit more than this version. You know what I mean? Let's throw a group on that. Invert that. <laughs> and then we can paint that where we want it. And maybe, I like the archway though. Maybe some of that stays. Bring it back in the moss area. Just here. I like the, the background. A little bit of shaping on that bush. That was good. See what's cool about, you know, keep keep folders once in a while and you can... Uh... Do we like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm undecided on that. We can keep that. Okay, cool. And you get a whole different like piece. That's looking nice. There we go. So if we had it everywhere, it would look like this. But putting it just in places where we want it, I'm just masking in those changes where, where I like them. 
you know so many options okay we got to stop that was that was too much fun <laughs> all right so i'm going to post this on uh metavisuals.live later today you'll have the whole stream uh to be able to watch uh again if you miss this and um if you feel so inclined to throw a few bucks this way uh as a thank you or it's totally not necessary because you can watch this for free but um um, I'm not selling these on, on Gumroad or, or doing anything like that. Uh, this is free content for you guys. And so, uh, I sure appreciate any donations that you guys would like to do. Um, but totally not necessary, of course. Um, and there is the final image. Gonna sharpen this guy. Nice. That was fun today, guys. Okay. I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much for joining. You guys have been awesome. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Thanks again, guys. All right. Take it easy.